Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lena Ahmadi, and uh, I'm very pleased to be with you here today. Uh, I'm working under, uh, in group of the Professor Kreise, Professor Al-Kamal, and Professor Douglas group in chemical engineering department. And uh, our research uh, has been sponsored by the CAMMET Energy, Natural Resource Canada. So we are working on the impact of the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles on the grid. So we were, in the previous uh, presentation, it was some talk about the uh, smart chargers and the uh, aggregators, right? But we are thinking that, okay, so what about if we don't have time to adopt those things in our grid? So what, sh what should we do? So we want to see that what would be the impact of the widespread adoption of the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles penetration and the uh, power plants, in fact. So I will go through the one slide motivation, objectives, our methodology, model development, our results, and the conclusion. So for the motivation, uh, if you look at the energy shares by sectors in Canada, we see that the transportation sector uh, has the um, largest amount of the, use the largest amount of the energy. And for fuel shares for, of transport sector, we saw that, oh, the motor, most um, part of that, I mean, it will produce by the motor gasoline. So we thought that, that if we replace it by the alternative form of energies, like plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, that would be a good idea for the transportation or transport sector. So the objective is that we want to satisfy Ontario load demand, uh, considering electricity consumption of PHEVs uh, by operational strategy and energy generating pl planning. And at the end, we'll consider the uh, carbon dioxide emission reduction as well. So first, for our load demand, we, we forecasted the load demand uh, without considering plug-in hybrid electric vehicles from 2000, uh, 12 to 2030. So in this part is the forecasting part. So we use the SPSS software for that. For the second part, we need to know the PHEV's consumption. For that, first we try to uh, find out how many new vehicles will we have in Ontario. And then we define some charging scenario, first the penetration scenarios, and then charging scenarios. And after that, we added the PHEV's consumption with the load demand without PHEV's to have the find out the new load demand. Then it's the optimization part that is with the integration of operational strategy and energy planning. And so hopefully we will have the minimal cost of the minimum cost of energy at the end. So for load demand, the forecasting part, we consider we have some variables the uh, forecast variables and the dependent variables. And in fact, in dependent and dependent variables. So we consider the weather variables, uh, demographic variables, and economic variables. There, because it's a short presentation, I cannot show you all of the uh, methods that we use. So we consider the collinearity of the variables and everything. Um, because for example, the, in the, for the weather variables, if you could just consider temperature, that's enough. We don't need to consider wind speed. And for PHEV penetration and charging scenarios, we thought that, okay, 10%, 30%, and 50, these are just scenarios, right? 10%, 30, uh, 30%, and 50% of the new vehicles sold in Ontario in 2030 would be plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. And for charging scenarios, we define char uh, four uh, charging scenarios, because um, for forecasting, we have hourly load demands. So we can define the charging scenarios based on the hourly ones, right? So we said that, OK, let's consider people come after work and they want to charge their vehicle. So from 5 o'clock at, at the uh, evening to 10 o'clock. And then um, if some people, they prefer, because they want to uh, save money, so they prefer to charge their vehicle uh, after midnight or from 22 at 10 o'clock. What about if some people, they want to charge their vehicle in the morning, and what about some people, they want to, oh yeah, this one is the, for the midnight, right? So this is the result that we achieved. We have three transitions. So as you see, after two, up to 2020, 
to, that's okay, everything, we live in peace, so there is no need, there is no deficit for electricity. But after that, it, it becomes more serious. So we need to uh, produce, generate more electricity for sure after 2022 after, or 2023. And the blue line is that the, on, on top is the maximum amount of the electricity that can be generated. We got this information, I mean the blue line from the IESO. For the optimization part, so we have the new demand and we know how much more electricity we need to produce. That, okay, so our objective function would be uh, the integration of the operational strategy and the uh, energy planning, okay, with the, with the, and our aim is to minimize the cost of electricity over the over 18 years of period. We can extend that period. The reason that we consider up to 2030 is that because the code is so large, so it's very, it takes, now it takes one week to run, so we, we consider shorter period. So, and the overall cost consists of the fuel cost, fixed and variable cost, the maintenance cost, operating cost, everything. So this is the preliminary result that we received now. As it's shown here, so most part of the new, uh, yeah, the new um, power plants would be natural NGCC, natural gas combined cycle, because um, it has a cheaper capital cost, right? And we, we haven't considered the carbon dioxide emission reduction yet uh, in our model. That's the reason that you don't see any renewables, new renewables or hydro, yeah, as a forecast for the, as a result of the model. So this is just the uh, calculation in Excel. So it's not the optimization or anything. It says that, okay, so if we have these transitions, these three transitions, with the, and we want to know how much reduction we will have in emission. So we, we saw that, okay, for example, and here is, we compare to 2012, we see that, okay, so the um, highest penetration, which is 50% of the plug, uh, new vehicles would be plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. And it's almost 800, it would be 800,000 uh, vehicles. So it says that, okay, so the, we will have a reduction uh, of the 21%, for example. So to conclude, in our research up to now, we forecasted the models of the peak base and hourly load demands. Uh, and also light duty vehicle souls. Then we define the um, charging uh, penetration level scenarios. So at the end of 2030, 800 uh, with, the eight, with the highest trans, uh, penetration, which is 800,000 almost, uh, we will have PHAVs, is greater than the supply with the 6,000 megawatt. Uh, and for sure, available resources in Ontario cannot uh, satisfy this uh, deficit. So, and most of the new power plants uh, considered to generate the electricity at the beginning of the 2015. The reason is that uh, all the coal uh, will be shut down by the end of the 2014. And the amount of installed capacity from coal power plants that would be out of service is 4,000 megawatt. So the large fleet of new NGCC uh, is as a result of cheaper capital cost. And based on develop optimization model, the total amount of new power plant uh, would be 9,000 megawatt, which will cover the amount of the electricity deficit that we have at 6,000 megawatt. And total emission from 2012 to 2030 uh, would be 32% uh, less than the without PHEVs in Ontario. So that's the conclusion. If you had any question, I would be happy to answer. And thank you.